This here is another viewer's dirty gaming PC. Welcome to PCDC Personal Computer Deep Cleaning, and here we attempt to deep clean viewer systems in and around the Orlando, Florida area for free. We charge $0.00 for the service. As long as you're okay with us filming these processes, uh, we'll do it for free for you. So if you have a system that looks anything like this, and this one's really rough, I mean, I'm already wearing gloves, so what does that tell you? Then uh, go ahead and file a submission. It is in this video's description. This one, again, like I said, is very gross. That's why it's here. The graphics card backplate is caked in a lot of like flaky dust and some other stuff. I'm not sure what it is. The front mounted radiator, this 240mm AIO, is totally caked in dust. I could not believe how thick the dust layer was on the inside of this radiator. I'm not even sure <laughs> why the fans are arranged this way because essentially this case is exhausting air out the front. So I think that has a lot to do with why the dust looks this way and why it's on the inside of the rad and not the outside where it usually is. But um, there are a few things that I do want to change about this, obviously, after we do deep clean the components, but um, we need to tackle the elephant in the room. This thing is gross, and we're going to clean it up. Stay with me. Liquid IV is a specially formulated electrolyte drink mix that uses cellular transport technology to enhance rapid absorption of water and other key ingredients into the bloodstream. Their hydration multiplier is great tasting and perfect for staying hydrated, and you can find them at Costco along with their best-selling flavor, lemon lime, just in case you were interested. My wife's actually been a huge Liquid IV fan for several months. She's a huge water drinker in general, but Liquid IV gives it that extra kick she needs with its plethora of included vitamins. C3, B5, B6, and B12, some of which have been shown to help your body defend against infections, as well as more vitamin C than you'd find in an orange, and as much potassium as you'd find in a frickin' banana. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in this. Not bad for a great tasting mix, mind you. Sometimes when you throw stuff in here, it tastes awful, but this stuff is fantastic. But don't just take my word for it. Try it yourself if you haven't already. In fact, by clicking the link in this video's description, you'll get a free three pack featuring their hydration, energy, and immune support products sent right to your door. You can also grab 25% off if you're already a fan of Liquid IV by using my special offer code GREG25. Again, that's GREG25. Click the top link in this video's description. So again, welcome to PCDC. Now I do want to talk a bit about this system's specifications here. It is using a Ryzen platform, uh, an AM4 socket, definitely. I'm not sure what CPU. Uh, it is an MSI motherboard. I can't tell what chipset because the model number is being covered by the graphics card, which is a GTX 1070 from EVGA, one I've used many times in the past. It is a great card. Now looking through the cable management here, I can tell that, um, I mean, things are, are quite clean. This doesn't look like this person's first build. I would be surprised if it was. Cable management is, uh, is very nice, but I do have to question the airflow choice, the decisions regarding exhaust fans and intake fans and where those are located, it just doesn't make sense to me. So what we have are two intake fans up top. These are traditionally exhaust, mind you. We do have an exhaust at the rear. This looks like a stock fan included with the case. And then we have two fans up front mounted to the radiator in this 240mm AIO, but those are also set to exhaust. So you, you have air coming in through here, and then it's it's going out both the front and back of the case. Of course, you can't go out the side because you have your, your tempered glass panel here. But I, I don't understand this. I don't understand this direction of air. Why would you have air exhaust out the front? I mean, if you have such such nice ventilation up front in the mesh of I C, and that's what made this case so popular, right? Why would you not have air coming in? And, and as a result, You've got dust in very strange places, like in this case, between the fan and the radiator. Um, and it probably does explain, at least in part, why there is so much dust where there is dust in this build. Um, a lot of it collected on top of the graphics card, because again, you're pulling in air from above. Dust likes to settle from above. It'll fall down onto these components. So I don't really know, but uh, I do want to fix that. I, I just can't, I can't stare at that in good conscience and just think that it's, <sighs> It doesn't make sense to me. Now, a few other things to mention before we start cleaning. First off, uh, there's something in this build that is making my allergies go haywire, and I don't know what it is. I'm usually pretty good with like pet dandruff and stuff like that. So if this is like dog hair, cat hair in here, I definitely think this owner has pets. Um, that That's, I think, very apparent, but uh, something is just making my, my nose run like crazy. So if I sound strange, I apologize. It just comes with the territory. This dust is pretty uh, unreal. It's already in the air. Um, the other thing is that if you want to find our cleaning gear, it's in the video description tied to our Amazon and Newegg affiliate links. Actually, we don't really do Newegg anymore, but uh, our Amazon stuff, we get like one to 3% kickbacks from anything that you buy through those links. So that support is appreciated. Uh, the one last thing I want to mention, because I'm going to do it here in this video, is attempt to power the system on. I want to make sure the system works before we disassemble it, because if for whatever reason it doesn't work, 
at this point in time and then we clean it and reassemble it, how would we know that we didn't do something to break the system? So for insurance purposes, we need to power it on. So power on at the rear and the power button up front. Everything looks good. I really don't want to sit directly behind this exhaust fan. It's going to be blowing crap everywhere. I've kind of loosened some of it up uh, while filming these B-roll shots, but it looks like things are working. There's our post. That's really all I'm concerned with. Like if there are issues with the OS and stuff, I mean, that's not something that's going to be affected by disassembling the system and cleaning it. At least it shouldn't uh, if you know what you're doing, but I think it's going to boot into Windows anyway. So uh, that's good to go. The system works and now it's time to deep clean it. We're going to start by disassembling everything and we're going to kick it off with some sweet music. Here we go.
now it is time to reassemble. Finally, it is day two. These PCDC videos take literally two days to film. Uh, the first day is, of course, fully de deconstructing, disassembling the build uh, and deep cleaning everything. I also have to deep clean my office after finishing that. So that's eight, 10 hours right there, including the filming process. Uh, and then uh, day two, when the office is finally clean again, uh, we get to reassembly. Now, the one thing I'm going to upgrade, I don't like upgrading too much because it kind of defeats the purpose of deep cleaning a rig if you're gonna end up replacing half the components anyway. But the one component I do want to upgrade, it's actually three components in one, the fans in his system. He had a mismatch of fans in there, and I want to unify things with a very beautiful set of fans from Be Quiet. So these are their Lightwings fans. They come in 120 and 140 mil variants, and this is a triple pack, which includes a splitter so that you can adapt all three of these and connect them to your motherboard. Be Quiet's goal here was to reduce the amount of software clutter that folks run into when they adapt RGB to a build. They just wanted you to be able to run these directly into whatever motherboard you're using, and from there, you can utilize that motherboard software suite to control these. These are four pin fans, which means they are PWM controlled, which means you can get super low RPMs. If you want a really quiet operation, uh, you'll get that extra RPM bandwidth, so to speak, uh, with these fans here. And perhaps best of all, you're going to get that Be Quiet quality control. Good old QC. These feel very premium in the hand. Not that it really matters because they're going to be in your build, but they run very quiet as well, which is a huge factor when it comes to fan quality. They also have very beautiful RGB integration. The diffusers in these look really nice. They do a great job spreading out the lights. So you don't see individual blobs of light, uh, which is a huge pet peeve of mine. Some companies still have that issue, but uh, Be Quiet's first time around in the RGB fan space, they've done a heck of a job. Now, we're going to throw these into the build, and you're going to see that later on in the video, but for now, what we need to do is start reassembling things piece by piece, starting with the good old case. Cue the music one more time.
Whew. Okay, and uh, we are finally finished. The very end of day two, it's past uh, five o'clock here and uh, I'm ready to get this one finished. So what we need to do before we go ahead and tell the viewer that the system is ready to go, is make sure that it actually fires up and that there are no issues. I think everything will work out just fine here. The only issue I noticed was that his motherboard doesn't have an ARGB a header, which means that these fans can't plug directly into it. I think there's a workaround for that. I'm gonna let him know about it when I see him in person. But uh, for now, it looks like everything else is good to go. We're gonna get a post here. Hey, there we go. And and honestly, everything else in here is exactly the same. It's only showing us this screen uh, because we removed uh, the RAM, we removed the CPU. We also took out the CMOS battery. And uh, because of that, it thinks everything was reset, which it actually was. Well, this was fun. It was time consuming, yes, but it was also very fun. I always love seeing these transformations play out. This system looks virtually brand new. This 1074, the wind from EVGA is looking nice and shiny, if I do say so myself. The LEDs all work, the fans are spinning, no clipping of any kind. Uh, very happy with the way this card turned out. It's, you know, despite being several generations old, uh, is looking nice and spiffy. It's just, it's one of those cards that I think is going to be timeless at the end of the day. It's going to be like the, the good old GTX 970, right? The, the 70 series cards tend to tend to be really good bang for the buck, especially later on, right? Um, in this market, maybe not so much. Of course, you could have gotten these cards for under 200 bucks a couple years ago, but uh, now they're fairly expensive, sometimes in the $400 range. It just you know, it, it's hard to recommend that because, you know, we know in the back of our minds what we could have spent for these cards a couple years ago, but uh, if you need something now, it's it's one to consider, at the very least. We also did a pretty good job, I think, restoring this AIO. The radiator, again, was caked in dust before, and it is looking so much better now. We even restored those two 120 mole fans paired with it. Uh, these fans have these red ring accents, and I think that's what this uh, viewer was going for, was kind of a black and red themed build, so I didn't want to disrupt that at all. The only fans I replaced were the ones uh, that were just blacked out. And remember that when we perform these deep cleanings, we also make an effort to repaste both the CPU and the GPU. We also try to either uh, clean or replace the thermal pads in the graphics card as well as uh, over the VRM MOSFET setup uh, for the motherboard in question. Uh, so I expect those will make the biggest impact on temperatures. A lot of you ask about the before and after. Why don't you check before and after? I want to see how much uh, you know cooler the system runs out. There's no dust in the rig. Uh, and the truth of the matter is you know, removing surface dust isn't likely to affect too much. Um, now, obviously, if it's like super caked, yes, that's going to act as an insulator of sorts. So uh, that's no good. But uh, in this case, I mean, I think that the fact that the radiator was, was semi caked, that might have played a role in making things a bit more toasty. But the most noticeable impact I expect will be in the thermal paste department. Repasting both of those vital components will drop temperatures pretty dramatically, especially if that uh, thermal compound is several years old. And if you ask me, it doesn't look like the system's ever really been maintained. And if it has, uh, it, it, it got dirty pretty freaking fast. I mean, it was it was really nasty. So um, that's why I always try to, to repaste because that is more or less like insurance for me. It makes sure that there is some noticeable improvement from a performance standpoint uh, by repasting. We always use Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut stuff. It's very good. I have it linked below if you're interested. With that, if you guys enjoyed watching this transformation play out, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. You can check out our troubleshooting gear and our deep cleaning gear in this video's description, along with, uh, we've got, what, a few other things. Discord's down there. I've got my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. If you want to follow me in any of those places. We've also got links to the music that we include in these videos. I haven't mentioned that before, but we have teamed up with Monster Cat, and we're very grateful for that support there. Allows us to put nice music like the music you listen to in this video uh, in these videos and uh, we don't get uh, we don't get demonetized for it so uh, we're really grateful for that show them some support their stuff is also in the video description uh, if you aren't subscribed get subscribed and stay tuned for the next one I forgot leave a comment as well yeah do that there's so much stuff to, to, to remember at the end of these videos oh my gosh anyway my name is Greg thanks for deep cleaning with me